Hey, morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So I came out here to test the final build of MCOM Tools OS Community R3. That's gonna be released on Thanksgiving Day. And I wanted to test all of the packet modes uh, as best I can. So I came out here with the pup and uh, decided to bring out the old Yagi. I haven't done too much on two meters in a while. So first up, I set up my tarp shelter. You guys have seen this before. Uh, trying something new for the mast, I took the uh, pool mast that we use for scrubbing our pool and it turned out to be a good size and have it up with two extensions, probably about, I don't know, maybe 12 feet at the top and right now it is pointing directly due west. And then in terms of the gear itself, uh, kind of went heavy today, I only went out maybe two miles and uh, brought the Yaesu 857D. So we've got this guy running here. And uh, the nice thing about running these Yagis, if you guys have not seen me in the past, and using things like uh, painter's poles and a few other really simple techniques, is that I can go ahead and take this guy here, and we've got a uh, FM repeater probably about 22 miles away. So we're just going to turn this down, and I think that's roughly the bearing down to uh, that repeater station. So let's go ahead and pop in. I'm only running 20 watts right now, and wondering if anybody will come back to me. This is KT7RUN operating out of the Tonto National Forest, uh, experimenting with a Yagi deployed off of a tarp shelter and wondering if uh, anybody can come back to me with a signal report. Again, the call here is KT7RUN looking for a quick radio check. KT7RUN, this is KR7R. I have got you into the Shaw 240, clear quieting. I can hear you perfectly fine. This is KR7R. KR7R, thank you so much for uh, coming back to me. I wasn't sure if it was going to work with some of the obstructions. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Seven threes. KR7R from KT7RUN. Uh, I'll be clear in a few minutes. Just like that, I'm going to have to look up his call sign. It's funny, the old version of MCOM Tools had an off-grid, offline call sign feature, but I'm going to have to re-add that probably next year. All right, let's switch over to Packet. Really happy with the setup. And heck, the little man over there, he loves coming out here. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell MCOM Tools which radio it's using, and I'm going to tell it it's using the 857D, using the ET radio command, and uh, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to that guy. And now that it knows that it's supposed to talk to an 857, it does provide instructions here for one-time settings on this radio uh, to the user, and at this point all we have to do is take our USB cable and plug her in. All right, so the uh, radio is connected, and you can see there that we have the radio set to 857D. Digireg it is detecting that cat control is connected. We do not have GPS, but I did bring a dongle, and we also get confirmation that the audio is working with the Digirig mobile. Next command we're going to run is ET mode. This is a switcher to allow you to select a variety of different modes, and automatically it takes care of everything. I want to get weather first, so I'm starting the APRS client. All right, not bad for a 20 watts. The first thing I did is send a message to WXBot. It's a special uh, station identifier. And I just put in my call sign, which does a reverse lookup of where I have my FCC license registered. And you can see there, six miles east, southeast, New River, Arizona. Uh, this afternoon, sunny, 76 degrees. So we're going to call APRS a success still only on 20 watts with uh, a few obstructions going down into the Phoenix area. And again, Phoenix is probably about 20 to 25 miles point to point from my current location. So last week I decided to hold a little event called the TTP Campout 1.0. It was the pilot program to see what a field training exercise would look like for two nights and three days. I had four friends join me. One of them was KK7 IKG. And I showed those guys, one, how to install MCOM tools, how to use it, did a deep dive in packet, HF, all that good stuff. So anyways, the second thing I decided to do to help those guys uh, stay trained up is I've been getting in the habit of sending them messages asynchronously using APRS and a service called Mail. And that is destined to Mail. And then the message is at the call sign and then a small message. And I just put, OK, field testing MCOM tools R3 final. So APRS is working pretty well and I think right now I'm going to go ahead and try to switch over to Winlink. One of the other things I built into MCOM tools is the ability to set up services fairly quickly and one of them is support for 
an APRS digipeter, but also just a straight packet digipeter. And the use case for something like that is let's assume that I want to hit a distant windlink station that I can't get to maybe with my handheld, but then I have a station at my house or my mobile rig that has maybe 50 watts and a better antenna. So before leaving today, I have another system running MCOM tools. Again, the same build right now, but it's sitting on 145.710 and it's set in DigiPeat mode for packet. So I'm gonna to try to use that station out here in the field and then we're gonna bounce that signal, retransmit it north about 30 miles and see if we can do wind link. All right, so we're just gonna go back to ET mode. The old mode for APRS is still running. You can see that on the bottom of the screen. And now without doing anything, we're just gonna switch over to wind link over VHF, UHF. This was one of the cool pieces of feedback that uh, the guys I trained with uh, told me to make to make things easy. And it's gonna do all of the nerd stuff under the hood kill all the services, restart everything, and start up even WinLink from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna to try to connect real quick here, and we're just gonna hit connect. And I left this radio running so we can monitor this. And you can see we're on 145.710. And it looks like we're actually already connected to the uh, station out in Mount Union, Arizona. And this path is quite honestly going through uh, KT7RUN-2, that's the packet digipeter, about two and a half miles in that direction. And then it's going off to the distance station up uh, just north of me. And uh, we actually already did the entire session. So the next thing that I want to do right now is compose a quick sit rep and send it out to the same group of buddies I went out last weekend. All right, so we're low on batteries, put together a quick sit rep here. Uh, the subject is ETC R3 final. Self and pup okay. Location, I put my location in UTM. Water remaining, 1.5 liters. ETA home, 1200 Zulu. And my capabilities include VHF voice over the Metrolink system, APRS mail, and WinLink. So we'll post that to our outbox. Action connect. And go ahead and send that off. Yeah, packets are flying. We're connected again. And if we go to our outbox, this message should disappear as soon as it's trafficked. And on packet, it's pretty quickly. And uh, looks like it's sending it off right now. The direction of uh, the channel is gonna change uh, a little bit. I realized how much I enjoy building uh, product. Yeah, so the plan uh, next year is to uh, focus on, on software. I wanna do four or five different builds. Where I am right now with the community edition is exactly where I want it to be. It's very much a plug and play platform that takes all of the nerd stuff away from you. It is near zero configuration. If you know your call sign, your grid, and whether you have a WinLink account or not, you can go ahead and do the five different modes. So I will be focusing a lot on the members specifically and trying to release one graphical user application on the order of every three to four months. Uh, probably with the first one dropping sometime in January. So if you really like what I'm doing, want to see this, I really encourage you guys to come over and buy me a coffee. Uh, my apologies if you guys joined in the last month or so. I have been heads down and I have a backlog of over 200 messages and it's going to take me some time to get through those. Anyways, guys, just wanted to take you out here, do the Yagi, do some packet, get out here with the pup. Anyways, be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, guys, so if you're still sticking around, there is one thing that I squeezed into MCOM tools. It's not plug and play, uh, but I want to experiment with it, and that is uh, connecting to a packet-based BBS. I want to explore bringing back packet as if it was the 1980s and 90s again, and essentially pre-internet. I want to have these local watering holes for people to leave messages, have inboxes, uh, that can store messages for later retrieval, the ability to post local bulletins. And uh, I came out here to test out that little bit of software. I'm not gonna do an overlay here, but uh, unable to connect to a station 40 miles there that has a BBS still running. So um, 
a really big proponent of uh, civilian-owned infrastructure. I know people are looking at Mesh-tastic, but personally for me, um, I'm going to be going down the packet route and also hopefully innovating in that space and getting more and more packet stations up and operational as if it was the mid-80s and 90s. All right, more coming, guys. Stick around. Appreciate you all. Come on, Scotty. Let's go home. Are you done playing radio?